Hey everyone, Herco8 here, and welcome back to the channel where we talk about a day in the life of IT. In today's video, we're going to actually do a part two from last week's video where we discuss how easy it is to upgrade from Windows 10 uh, to Windows 11 using MECM, Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. And today is the actual demonstration. Uh, so we're going to have two demonstrations. Uh, well, two sets of demonstrations, I should say. Uh, first is going to do a complete upgrade within Windows itself. And then, uh, you know, if you're considering going directly to Windows 11 from Windows PE, we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, as of this recording, 22H2 has been released. Um, I haven't had time to actually worked that into my upgrade path yet, uh, but I have worked that into um, Windows PE where we're doing it from a boot image. So that is up and running. We'll, we'll see that in action. I mean, honestly, there's really no difference. I just, I was mainly focused on getting my boot image upgraded. And if you ever updated the ADK, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but the uh, upgrading within Windows, the actual upgrade OS path, shouldn't be too hard. I just need to extract the ISO and uh, make a new um, upgrade OS image. All right, so with that said, uh, you're looking at two VMs. Both are hosted on Hyper-V. Uh, one is on a computer that's running an i7 fourth gen CPU, uh, which I believe is Optiplex 7010. And another is running on my local CPU, which is the Optiplex 3030. And that has an i7 eighth gen. And obviously uh, one of the biggest I guess not even a controversy or one of the biggest stories that Windows 11 had was, hey, you need a minimum GPU in order to properly install it. All right. So, I mean, there is a way to get around that. But, you know, if if you care about updates, if you care about securing your, your environment, you definitely want to look into upgrading your hardware. Uh, but I do want to show you what happens both when um, you you have some type of hardware. Now, I do have the system information page and it does meet other uh, minimum requirements. So obviously disk space and memory, both both uh, VMs have five gigs of memory at all times. Uh, both are is running secure boot and both has TPM 2.0 enabled. All right, so let's actually get started here. Um, we're going to go ahead and look here. So as you can see here, this is our software center. And again, this is uh, from a task sequence. So remember the VM on the left is the one that's uh, the unsupported hardware where the VM on the right is the supported hardware. Um, now, obviously the one on the left will fail. So once that fails, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that and kind of do like a, a speed up. Um, for installing Windows 11. So let's go ahead and get into that now. Uh, so again, <clears throat> as I mentioned in my previous video, um, I'm, I do give the option of users rolling back to Windows 10 if they you know, decide to that they don't like Windows 11 right now. Um, and to do that, there's a, a feature in DISM that you can do that. Again, that's in my previous video. And again, I'll put, I'll put that in, in the car in the top right corner. So let's go ahead and choose this one here. And this is one of the good things I like about this here. Again, it's prompting the user, hey, if you upgrade, this is what's going to happen. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let that do its thing. And we're also going to do the same thing here. And we're going to wait for the task sequence progress bar to pop up here. And since I did this one first, this is the one we'll see first. Oh, well, I guess I lied. This is the one we'll see first. So the other computer is a little bit slower um, and I am doing it remotely. Uh, so there we go. So there's a task sequence there. So again, it's checking the hardware for Windows 11. So it did pass that very first step that I mentioned in my previous video, the uh, readiness checker. Uh, but this is actually running a, a PowerShell script that's doing Microsoft's own develop um, checker. And one of the biggest points about that is the CPU. Um, I really wish there was a way to plug in any CPU value and determine if it's uh, eligible to run Windows or not. Fortunately, that's not the case. You actually have to run the script on the device that you want to check. 
All right, so we are just looking here and it does take a while to run. I'm really not sure uh, because in this package where the PowerShell script is hosted, there's not a lot of uh, content there it's just a whole bunch of scripts that it runs uh, so at most it's about maybe 600 kilobytes definitely less than a megabyte so not sure why it takes this long uh, the script itself should also shouldn't take this long uh, it takes about three or four seconds to run um, and it's obviously it's running on the system account so uh, doesn't need any admin rights or anything like that so we're just gonna uh, continue here and with a little bit of movie magic or video magic, <laughs> I'll go ahead and cut directly to some action. All right, so you see the supported VM is doing its thing. It passed the um, hardware check. Uh, so it's actually going to go into the upgrade system here. Uh, so let's look, uh, let's look, uh, here we go. All right, so we got a whole bunch of failures here. And the first thing that pops up, and again, uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, I don't have a log or anything. I think this is just fine. And the message is clear as day. Uh, this computer cannot run Windows 11. See the reasons below. Obviously the CPU plus only has one core. Uh, you need at least two cores and those couldn't be logical cores as well. So if you have 16 logical cores on your processor, that is what Windows is looking for. And we go ahead and hit OK. And now this is another message that uh, is in the actual task sequence itself. It's not part of the script anymore. And this is how I kill the whole task sequence uh, by doing a SQL one. Uh, obviously, anything outside of zero or 3010 will fail. And we just go ahead and hit close here, and we get the fail immediately. And again. Uh, I forget what this exit code is, but again, um, that's what you will get if the hardware is not supported. And again, I think this is really handy. So you saw that first pop up where it mentioned uh, the, the CPU and you know, there's other possible um, pop ups that can happen. So CPU, the TPM chips not activated or enabled, or you're not, you don't even have a um, 2.0 version. Uh, the other thing is secure boot and obviously hard drive and memory. If those are low, then it, it'll, it'll also fail. Uh, but you can see this VM here has not failed. In fact, it's running just fine now. Um, and it will continue to run and it will continue to upgrade. And I'm going to go ahead and speed this up now. So the restart is again, as you probably already aware, takes a few seconds. So we're going to go ahead and cut to uh, where it actually reboots and we will see what happens during a reboot. So let's go ahead and get to that shortly. All right. So now that we are restarting, um, we're going to wait until it actually gets into uh, what I like to call OSD and to me OSD is operating system deployment and at this stage uh, the OS is working but you can't do anything SSCM is doing everything in the background uh, so as you can see here it's pretty much doing the update and we should actually see the SSCM progress bar come back up shortly so let's wait for that as well <music> So now we have that progress bar that I was referring to. Wow, this has took quite a while. Uh, so for me, as I'm recording this live, it's been about an hour going forward. Uh, obviously, it may be even shorter for you. But uh, with that said, uh, 
it took about 45 minutes to get to this part and then my testing a full upgrade from windows 10 to windows 11 using this method will take about 90 minutes with all the restarts and everything um, that i have set at least for our environment um, you may have more things in your environment or you just may use the default loadout that uh, mecmm gives you but uh, for us it takes about 90 minutes all right so i'm just gonna let this go and we're gonna do some more movie magic oh, i keep saying movie magic but it's video magic so. all right so here are the actual scripts that we run uh, one of the biggest scripts we run is removing extra install apps so like i mentioned in my previous video that includes everything like netflix uh, candy crush uh, Grove music things of that nature uh, the next script you're gonna see is OneDrive uh, again we are Google Suite so we don't use any 360 uh, products in fact we use office LTSC rather than office 365 um, and then the next script after that is removing teams that's a very quick script it's just staging a um, scheduled task that happens on the login and then the final script you're going to see is removing the device from the collection where we use the i believe you call it the web service for configuration manager um, which is a great tool to have uh, can be kind of risky but we we do have but we do have security measures in place once that uh, remove device from collection has finished uh, it should go to directly into Windows and allow the user to log in well guys that's been upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and again it's so easy to do like there's really nothing you need to think about it just works as long as you have the the right steps in the task sequence but the good thing about MECM is that you know they, they give you a nice template and it pretty much does the work for you uh, the extra steps that I did you know checking the um, for the CPU usage and you know removing teams and having a 30-day window to roll back to Windows 10 uh, it's just a few customizations that I added and again just removing all of the junk um, we can easily get rid of you know unnecessary stuff well uh, this video is gonna be very fun to edit uh, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of how easy it is to just upgrade to Windows 11 uh, with just literally a click of a button or a click of two buttons because I had to confirm that I really did want to upgrade but after that I didn't have to touch anything at all it just worked so uh, if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you didn't like it give me a thumbs down comment below if you have any questions or how are you upgrading I'm very curious how are you guys upgrading to Windows 11 you guys have been awesome I'll see you in the next video